Okay, Ethan, this video is for you, and this is also for whoever loves probability, including myself. And here's the question. We have two dice, and we are going to roll both of them. And we see that one of them is a 4, and we're trying to find out the probability that the other one is a 6. Before I show you guys the solution, let me just go over a common mistake. And I will also make a remark. Probability is pretty hard and it's pretty tricky, but it's so much fun. Anyway, here we go. Okay, let me just write down P for probability, and I'll open parentheses, and I'll describe what we're trying to do inside of the uh, parentheses. Right here it says, one is a probability that the other one is a 6. Maybe we're just trying to find out the probability that the first one is a 6, right? So I'll get the 6 I want. Or maybe the second one could be a 6 as well. Okay, so it seems like it. And I'm not really sure what does this have to do, but that seems just how it is, right? The first one is a 6. Or the second one is a six. Yeah. Okay, now let's see. What's the probability that when you roll a die and you get a six? A die has six sides, and six is just one of the sides, right? So it's one side out of six sides, so of course it's just one over six. And then we can do the same thing for the second one, and we add them up. And one over six plus one over six, we get one third. Okay, so let me tell you guys that this right here is not correct. And let me just go over why. First of all, you should be suspecting that this is not correct because we didn't use this information at all. And in fact, this right here does affect the probability, right? And the second thing is that one third is not even the correct answer to this question, okay? Suppose we didn't have this information at all. Suppose we are just trying to find out the probability that one of the dice is a 6. Namely, the first one is a 6, or the second one is a 6. This right here is not even the correct answer to this. And before I do this, let me work this out for you guys on the side. And in fact, we need that, right? So let me put that down right here. So let's find out the probability that one of the dice is a 6. Namely, maybe the first one is a 6, or the second one is a 6. And this right here, uh, once again, we don't know this, right? We didn't have this. We didn't know about the 4. Okay, now, this right here, it's a worse situation, and both events, in fact, can happen at the same time, isn't it? We can have the first one is a 6, and the second one also being a 6. In this case, be sure we do some subtraction. Be sure we avoid the double counting situation. So to work this out, what we do is, we have to first figure out the probability that the first one is a 6, and then we add it with the second one to be a 6, right? the probability for that. And we have to subtract the probability that the first one is a 6, and the second one is also a 6. And I will just write down both equal to 6. So, in fact, this right here was wrong because we didn't do this part. But once again, this and that, they are totally two different questions. For now, you will see why we need this data. But anyway, now let's see. The probability that the first one is a 6 is 1 over 6, and then this one is 1 over 6, and then the probability that both dice come out to be a 6 is the first one is a 6, which is with the probability 1 over 6, and you multiply by the probability the second one is also a 6, which is 1 over 6 as well. And now, you can just work this out, you end up with 11 over 36. And this right here will be the answer for this, when we don't know about the 4 at all, right? Okay, so that should clear this question up about the 1, sir. Hmm, so now, what exactly does this have to do with the whole question? One of them being a uh, 4. Perhaps I will also show you guys another common mistake, right? So, let me just write this down. Okay, now if you really want to use the 4 somewhere, 
and also the six. Maybe we're trying to find out one of them is a four and the second one is a six. So let me put this down here. So I do have the four and the six, huh? Okay, now let's see how we can figure this out. Well, when we roll two dice, the total possible outcome is six times six, namely 36, okay? When we roll two dice, the total possible outcome is 36. And I want one of them to be a four and the other one to be a six. How many possible ways can that happen? Well, just imagine that we have two dice, this one, this one. Maybe I can get four and six like this, or I can get six and four like that. So we have two possible ways. So the answer to this part is two over 36, okay? And in my opinion, when we're doing probabilities, it's actually better sometimes to not reduce the fraction. So I'll leave it as how it is for now, all right? But this right here, once again, it's not the correct answer to the original question. That's why I have been doing the math in blue. Now, here is the DEO. <laughs> this right here, it's called the conditional probability. When we see this happens, in fact, it narrows things down more. So you'll see the actual answer that we have. It's much bigger, it's, it's not much bigger. The actual answer that we have right here for this question, it's actually bigger than this answer, right? So. How do we do this? Let me write this down for you guys. I will first approach it with the formula way, and then second, the, I will show you guys with the uh, sample space way. So this is called the conditional probability. Here's the deal. First, it's a notation. We write it down as probability of A given B. This vertical line just means given. So. Sometimes once you know certain things already, in fact, you get to narrow things down, right? And given B, here is the thing. Right here, we see that one of them, it's a four. So that's the given information, right? And we're trying to find out the probability that the other one, it's a six. That's the A, okay? Okay, so this right here is just a notation, and now here is the formula that you can just kind of think about it. When we're trying to find out the probability that A given B, what we do is, we have to first find out the probability that A and B both happen. We're trying to find out the probability that A and B both happen, okay? And then we divide it by the probability of just B. And because of this right here, because of this right here, uh, you know, you may be able to uh, increase the probability. I will show you guys why. So now do you guys see the connection that why we did this right here? Okay, now let me just write this down. We are trying to find out the probability that one of them is a six. Given one of them is Okay, so we have the given information, and this is the B, and on the top is the A. So what we're trying to do is, on the top, we have to first find out the probability that one of the dice is a 6, and the other one is a 4. And that's exactly this right here. So I'll put this down, 6. Of course, you can switch this too, doesn't really matter, right? You can put a 6 here, put a 4 here, doesn't really matter. And for the denominator, we're trying to get the probability that one of them is a 4. So on the bottom here is probability. Okay, now, in fact, we have all the information already. What's the top, the probability that one of them is a 4 and the other one is a 6? This right here is exactly that, which is 2 over 36. So let me just write this down. And then now, let's look at the denominator. What's the probability that one of the dice is a 4? Well, let's look back to here. Earlier, this right here was trying to calculate the probability that one of them is a 6. <laughs> and now we're trying to do it with 4. And do you see, 
the six and the four matter? No. I can choose five, I can choose two, I can choose three. It doesn't matter. The probability that one of them is a four is the same as saying the first one is a four or the second one is a four. And that's exactly what we talked about earlier. We had to first figure out the probability that the first one is four, and then we add it with the probability that the second one is a four, and then we have to subtract both of them being equal to four. For this, we get one over six. For this, we also get one over six. Both of them being a four means we have to do one over six plus one over six times one over six, which is still this, and we still get that. And we still put down 11 over 36. Whew. In the end, do whatever you want to do to simplify this little fraction, this little complex fraction, you get 2 over 11. And this right here is the answer to the original question, right? Okay, as a bonus, this is the time I will show you guys with the sample space. If you guys are still watching, I appreciate it so much. Now, here is the deal. And especially when we first learn about probabilities, it might be easier to just look at the sample space to work with, all right? Here is the idea. When we roll two dice, we have a total of six times six, namely 36 outcomes, right? So what we're doing is, for example, this box here means the first one, the, the one in blue is a one, and then the one in red is also one. So it's one, one. And you can just pretty much continue this box right here means 1, 2, and then of course 1, 3, and so on, all right? And now here is the idea. Right here when the question says, we see one of them is a 4. Maybe we're just talking about this column, because this right here, we know one of them has to be a 4, right? So you have this six possible boxes to look at. But don't forget, we might also have this right here because we also get 4. So in fact, based on this information, we narrow down to we narrow our simple space down to just these boxes that I you know, color in black. And we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Do not double count this box twice. This is why we have to subtract the probability that both of them being a 4, right? Do not double count this twice. We have a total of 11 of these boxes. Now, that should, that should tell you guys this right here, the probability that one of them is a 4. It's 11 out of 36, all right? And let's see, we're trying to find out the probability that one of them is a 6. Well. Which box is one of them is a six? This one, four and six, right here, right? So the blue one is four, and the red one is six. And maybe this one, the blue one is a six, and the red one is a four. You see, we have one, two, two boxes out of 11, just like this. So by using the simple space like this, once you know one of them is a 4, you narrow down your sample space to these 11 boxes only, and then you look for the other one being a 6, which you have these two possible uh, boxes to look at. 2 over 11, and that's the answer right here. Well, if you didn't have this information, if you're just trying to find out the probability that one of them is a 4 and the other one is a 6, you have to use the whole sample space because you didn't have that. So it's 2 out of 36, which is the one that we did. But anyway, hopefully you guys like this video. I certainly have a lot of fun discuss probability just like this. And if you guys have more questions with probability or things like that, let me know. I'll try to answer it. But um, yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. And if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to do like fun math videos for you guys. And as always, that's it.